welcome to never a dull moment and you guys really love it when we do some sharpening tutorials i'm definitely excited about this because we recently did a video on cbn stones versus diamond stones and today we're actually going to be reviewing the cbn plates that were sent to us by hans plog of schlieff junkies hopefully i said that right i do not speak german but we will definitely put a link in the description to get to hans's channel he's an incredible uh, craftsman of his own he is all about knives all the time um, I'm very thankful my wife's having technical difficulties You're okay okay so we're very thankful that uh, that he has decided every once in a while when he comes up with a new thing to send it to us um, so the evaluations we're doing today just as a disclaimer we are not paid for these um, as a matter of fact I ended up paying for the stones so you can't even say they're given to me for free um, he'd wanted to reach out. I have no problems taking you know, the product. So we have not been compensated for this review. I am going to do this review right now for you live. So what we have here is CBN. If you haven't watched the other video, you'll know that CBN is the second, in theory, it's the second hardest substance that you can find behind the diamonds. You will see uh, over here some other materials we have the regular uh, ceramic stone we're used to. We have a diamond resin bonded stone by Naniwa, and then we have the Atoma diamond plate. And the difference with this is this diamond plate, the diamonds are evenly spaced. Lots of little things in their detail. Um, so again, if you haven't seen the video, I don't want to get into it too much, but there's a whole nother video talking about the differences between electroplating, resin bonded, and so on. So these plates, this steel, uh, so he has taken the CBN particle. So we explained before it has an octahedron shape. It is basically a, a four-sided pyramid, kind of like glued to a four-sided pyramid. It is a, it is a, it is a diamond shape um, kind of a thing. And when they electroplate it, nickel and this particle are like glued basically through electricity. The nickel melts and these uh, CBN particles are inside the nickel sticking to the electric plate. So I will say that one thing I was warned about. What is that? I jumped it three times and it just was like, whoa. Okay. So I will say that one thing you'll need to know. And go ahead and point it to the stone next to it. You can really see the glistening. Yeah, I was on that one a minute ago, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so the steel on the side is oxidative, meaning like if it gets water on it, this can rust. You won't have any rusting problems here. But you can see the sparkles that the CBN kind of gets off. This particular one is a 200-400, so it really grinds. Well, if I could focus, there we go. And the uh, one other one over here is an 800-1200. Okay. And so what we're going to do today for some feel is we're going to sharpen two different steels. We're going to sharpen a, a regular German steel, soft, it's, but it's like a 59 on the hardness scale. And... This should go through that like butter. I mean, this CBN should really, really, really make sharpening very easy. But another thing we're going to do is we're going to put it to the test. So I have a HAP 40 knife. It's never been used other than the unboxing. Um, so we have a worn out knife by a customer who has brought it to be sharpened. We're going to make sure it's dull. Then we have the HAP 40 knife that has never been used. We know it's sharp. Yeah. It, it had a score of in the 160s. And so we're going to go ahead and dull it. We got a little visitor from Oliver. He is coming to say hello. He wants us to play. So, so we're going to dull these knives and we're going to see what it's like to sharpen a regular everyday softer steel German steel knife on something that's as aggressive as CBN. We're going to feel it. We're going to hear it. We're going to see how fast it works. And then we're going to definitely, like I said, put it to the test because what happens is my messages pop up on my watch so i'm doing that in case you see me swatting <laughs> so then what we're going to do is we're going to take this super like powdered steel and we're going to dull it it's going to be painful we're because it's grab. brand new and we're going to dull it and just so you know like let me point to this this regular naughty wall ceramic 1000 grit stone does not have the ability to sharpen this knife this knife has the ability to just cut away material on this. Um, this will just keep disappearing. This will never touch this. This material is harder than this stone. 
So the only options for HAP40 are going to be, you know, Diamond or CBN. So we're going to put it to the test today and take this. This is heated to a, a, a Rockwell hardness of 65. So we're definitely going to put it to the test. Um, my, my other dog is visiting my wife behind. She's quite curious of what's going on today. We have been very busy not playing with our animals. All for you, our Never Dull Moment fan club. We appreciate you being here today. So... I personally am going to do the like I already I already don't think this is sharp. I would imagine not. Because that's what they want to do. Sharpen. <laughs> By comparison. Okay. So Yeah, no. So we are going to like quickly take this already dull knife and um so the things you need to know about the cbn this plate was flattened by hans or whoever made it for him uh it had to be extremely accurate within like microns i mean like 0, 0.0 micro it has to be flat i can't flatten it there is no flattening stone for an electroplated cbn plate so it needed to be flat the cbn particles um, for this are very small. You'll find that it's very hard to get CBN smaller than the 1200. What happens is as the particles get smaller when you electroplate, they disappear below the nickel. So it's an interesting point that it's very hard to get finer plates. So we've got a, a 1200 is the finest on here. And I'm actually just going to sharpen this on the 1200. I'm going to use the 200 and 400 to be more aggressive on the uh, HAP40, but I don't think I'm going to need that for this. So let's listen. So we have a little bit of burr in the middle. This knife is pretty dull, I can tell you that. So you can see the load. So obviously we're not worried about the CBN pulling out of the lecture plate. So everything you see here is metal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all in the middle of this, there's a burr. Uh, missing a little bit here, missing a lot here, very dull here. Now I could have easily, let's go ahead. I mean, if I wanted to go on the 800, yeah, why not? well, I just wanted to see, I mean, you know, how aggressive, you know, I mean, 1200 is definitely 1200. This knife has been used for a very long time. They probably thought it was a butter knife at this point. I'm not sure they could actually separate meat anymore with this knife. I'm not saying anything about, about the client. It's just, I think people sometimes forgot that knives could be sharp. They've gotten used, used to, to yeah. yeah. They they got used to it being dull. I don't even know if the tips are straight. So I'm actually kind of surprised at how um, quiet the stones are. I definitely think that um, that I now I'm gonna tell you what. It is so dull right here. It is so dull. We're, we're jumping on to the big boy here. Because um, of what they used it for, you know? I mean, yeah, we're jumping on to the 200. So we can see there was a little load left from before. Our dog is really upset. Now this, the volume changed tremendously. Okay, but we'll see if this knife. Yeah, nice. Is it like, just me well, or is that tip crooked? Hey, the tip is definitely crooked. Yeah. So crazy. our dog really wants to play. If you can hear her, okay. There she is. She is feisty, feist. <laughs> Oh, 
And this isn't necessarily a tip straightening episode. So like I said, you can see the metal. So I would tell you with the valleys, occasionally I do think we would have to go in here. I mean, I don't think there's a problem with it cutting and loading. I'm trying to get that a little tighter. I mean, the burr is instantaneously up to 200, obviously. So I think the, the thing that my wife first noticed, um, the 200 is loud. And it's as loud as any other 200. It's as loud as, like, say, the King 200, um, but not as loud as the Nano Home 200. The Nan at Home 200 was like, I mean, it was pretty smooth. That's still pretty damn gravity, though. Okay, so, so let's not go to the four. Let's, now that we've, we've got that on here. Like I'm back. She wants to be on the show. She's a star. Are you a star? So she is unofficially my therapy dog, right? Aren't you? She's like, I sharpen knife. She said, I you see need, you. You need other therapy, not just knife therapy. Are we okay? Yeah, no, nothing wrong with me. I was just checking out the knife. <laughs> Definitely a lot quieter jumping. Now, what did we jump all the way to? We jumped to the 800. So, you know, talking out loud, what's the feedback on this? It's just a very hard stone. You don't feel that give that you would feel on the ceramic. So what's that white sharp? What's the difference from sharpening or something like that? So I don't necessarily feel like, first of all, this knife was dull. And, and I think a 200 on most things would take care of it. I think what you're going to see is these are going to do what that can't do on that steel. Um, yeah, we were curious, so we yep, so it's solid. Like I said, you. Just. So, an advantage of the CBN plate is going to be it's going to last for a long time. I mean, it's a one you, you spend a lot more. It's going to uh, do everything that you need it to do to every steel. So, if you invest a little bit extra. It's your one-stop shop for all your knives. You know, it's so funny. I'm so used to moving the knife around so I don't dish. And yet, I don't have to worry about dishing. So that's another thing is you don't have to say like, oh, I got to get, like, let me use a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of... You don't have to because you're not worried about it. By the way, don't press too hard on this. Uh, this thing here, it's fixed. I mean, it's doing the work. You don't have to like press. Now, because this is just German steel, if you have not watched our series on wire edges, anything below a 60 hardness on the Rockwell steel, so it's going to get a wire edge. And what that means is that the burr has been flipping back and forth. So if you don't know some of the terminology I'm using, we have some sharpening for beginners. I'll put a link in the description. But if you, if you get a bird that you're flipping back and forth, this steel is so soft, it's not ripping away. Oh, mashed potato video. Mashed potato video. So what's happening then is the burr that flipped back and forth, in the end, it will line up and it will be like, like a little thin piece of paper just sticking up above your... So if your apex is like this, you'll have like an extra piece of metal that's just sticking up a little bit more. It flipped and it flipped. And so we need to rip it off. And one of the things that I got out in particular is the kangaroo tail. It's just extremely good for removing that. So normally with knives, I would go to a much finer... Um, you know, I like keep going, but we want to see what we can do with this. So we went to a 1200. Okay. Let 
Okay, so we're gonna get did that clean. So now, over here, for those of you who, like this is not meant to be a huge tutorial, but we now have the kangaroo tail. We have the rough side and the thin side. We, we need to, on this, dip steel below a 60 hardness, mm -hmm. we need to put it on at the angle that we, we, what we were, yep. and we need to increase it slightly. So if you were doing it at 15 degrees, you want to in like 15.4 to 17 degrees, which sounds ridiculous. How do you do 15.4? <laughs> so the best thing to do is just pull up on this. And it's that, that the crosshairs of the kangaroo is doing a really great job of ripping the wire edge. You should actually have enough pressure at first to remove the wire edge that you bow the material. Now you don't need a lot of pressure to bow it. You can see like it doesn't take a lot of pushing to bow it. Okay, so we're going to flip it over. If you really can see there's like such a pattern in there, it's really tough. So we're going to use that. So our goal is to get that metal removed. So our dog is just like, we need loving. You guys are filming, your audience is more important than us. These are the things we do. Okay, now, the last thing you do in our sharpening tutorial that we didn't mean to do is you should then do a strop. That's a bench strop at the same angle. So this is gunny juice. This is 0.5 micron. Okay, so I'm just rubbing the edge. If there's any problems at all with this, it's the softness of the steel and getting the wire edge removed. I will say it's definitely harder to do. This is Nano Cloth by Ken Schwartz. If you guys don't know, it's a great material. Um, Ken has since passed away. We love Nan. Uh, I mean, Ken, he was just an amazing human being. Uh, you might want to, you know, have something a little bit bigger again. You know, it might be a little bit easier for you. Some of the bigger strops are a little bit easier. But in the end, um, you know, we have a sharp knife that, we have a knife that, works. that pushes. Yep. Yes, so. Uh, so we were able to do that. We didn't have to go higher than the 1200 um, on a commercial level. That was amazing. So uh, imagine like literally panned over here. My wife will show you. Next, first of all, we're coming up is the 21 knives of 2021. Little hint here. Some things coming up. And then here is how, you know, knives come from people. So we have a bag of knives. Bag of knives. And you would imagine... That uh, sharpening, uh, like six of these, would be easy to do. The, the, the stones themselves will not dish. They'll do what it takes. That'll be awesome. Okay. We're going to pause and start again because this dog needs attention. <laughs> so let's take a break for two seconds and give this dog attention. All right. We played with the dog. <laughs> All right. So we have chased the dog around the house. The dog is very happy. So we are gonna do something very painful. We're gonna take a beautiful knife and make it dull. Uh, so this Hap 40 Conjo never, I mean, we cut a piece of food maybe. Did we cut a piece of food? I don't even think we cut a piece of food. I have no idea. We cut paper and we cut paper towels. I've lost Had a score of around 168. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so my curiosity is, did it even dull it? Because it's supposed to be like so... I mean, it's so sharp, right? I mean, so hard. I'm going to go with yes. Okay, so we dulled it. It's, yeah, it's folding the paper. Okay, so we, we know we dulled it. <clears throat> we'll save the same piece of paper so it knows not trick paper. <laughs> okay, so understand why are we talking about CBN and why are we testing it? This is a ceramic stone. This is Naniwa, one of the top companies in the world. This stone over time after use will dish. It will actually have a bevel and a burr. This is an unused stone. I have never used this stone ever. It's going to be coming up on a whetstone war soon. This stone is not hard enough. The abrasive material and the glue that is put together will wear away from the knife. The knife will not wear away from the stone. We need a material that's harder. Why? <clears throat> Super advanced stuff if you're checking in. So when they start combining things, vanadium, tungsten, chromium, when they start binding things, you make carbides. And so this is like carbon and vanadium hooked together. You have like this, this molecule that's I mean, this particle that becomes bigger it becomes super hard and there's and when you have these things you have a harder knife which gives you these edges but you have to have something that cuts it okay so if you can imagine uh mashed potatoes which we did a video where we make a beautiful edge uh mashed potatoes we make a long blade now imagine taking some baby potatoes and putting them in your mashed potatoes and trying to make an edge you couldn't You'd have little potatoes in your, they'd, they'd have round chunks. If you use a regular stone, you might pluck the potatoes out, which we'll call pitting, is so the knife will have holes in it. <clears throat> what you need is sharp, like diamond and CBN. So even though potatoes are in, like the potato rounds are in your mashed potatoes, it will cut the round and leave a triangular edge. So those carbites can stay in place, but they have a smooth apex. So this is the advantage is this thing works for a long time, industrial strength, already flat, doesn't dish, cuts every material. You invest a little bit more money and you can do it. So boom. So we're going to start with the 200. And if you remember, it sounds like an asphalt road. It actually doesn't sound quite as loud on this knife. No, why would it? I don't it know. It's got to be the, the steel. That's weird. It was louder on the... This is the 200. I mean, I'm... Yeah. It didn't say 1200, it, It's right? 200. No, 1200 is over there. So, on the, the harder steel... Can you, can you see the 200 on the side? Yep. That's what I was looking for. It is quieter. It does not sound as aggressive. And just wow. And just wow. And it happened faster with this knife because we started on 200. The other one we started at 1200 and had to get backwards. I'll tell you what it happened in my head just in case you guys... I know this material is hard, but I, in my head, started thinking that it was a 1200 grit. For some reason, just cut more than a 1200 grit. Like as if it was, I was thinking like, oh, CBN is so hard. So oh. it's the 1200 is just going to like shred through it, no, but it's, it's still a 1200, you know? And so don't make that mistake. So this got a burr like ridiculously quick. The 200, obviously you expect that, but on steel this hard. Yes. Now, the goal here is to test these stones and evaluate these, these CBN electroplated wet stones. I 
I would tell you for this knife to make it a laser. The, the stones that I have go 200, 400, 800, 1200. I would want finer. So that means I have to stay with CBN and diamond. Now I have some diamond plates. I think they go to 3000. Let me explain again the problem. CBN molecules and diamond molecules. If they're electroplated, the smaller the particle, it gets inside the nickel. And so therefore the cutting facets are melted into the nickel. So then you, you wouldn't have anything to cut. This is stupid right here. So you would need something smoother. And that's when you might go to say uh, the vitrified diamonds where the diamonds themselves are baked into the ceramic. And as the, the stone wears away, it's revealing more diamonds. And again, don't push. Let the weight of your hand do it. It's that's super aggressive. I mean, it really just went through this hot 40 like it was nothing. It's not subtle. So there's a guy named Antonio. We're friends on Instagram. He's an amazing knife sharpener. He's a chef. He really likes to do it. And he posted on social media that he had, it was either a ZDP 189 or a HAP 40, and he was using like a, either a Japanese natural stone or a synthetic Ayato, okay, he's around. He couldn't, he, he spent 30 minutes, and he doesn't speak English. So I couldn't express to him, you don't have the equipment. You know, so you're, you're simply, you're just using the wrong thing. So this is what he needs. And Hans is in Germany. I'll have to let Antonio know since he's over in Italy. Um, so we're going to the 800. You can definitely see a difference in the particle size. You can just see that we've definitely gotten a little oh, finer. Yeah, yeah. Definitely quieter. It's kind of weird because the slurry is so different. It's just metal. There's not ceramic abrasive in the slurry. There's just metal. It did not produce a micro bevel. It produced a, here I am, you, it's easy to find me. Burr, I said the wrong word, burr. You guys like to correct me in the comments. It did not make a micro burr. It made a, here I am, burr. It's, it's very easy to find. <laughs> it's a big old boom. Okay, so 1200, this is the finest that I have from Hans um, in CBN. Again, I don't have to worry about it dishing. I don't have to worry about using one part. Uh, definitely quieter. Okay, so now let's do some edge leading strokes. 
if you haven't learned about edge leading strokes, um, now it's going to be a whole nother video. Dropping because we're not putting it on. Well, we're are we on we're not going to put it on kangaroo tail. We're going to go to leather with um, it's a like a firm leather with diamond emulsion. Again, only thing that's going to to rip away anything is diamonds and CBN. And so we want to make sure that any burr that's left gets pulled off. Now, pushing the edge into this mm -hmm. is a really good way to kind of clean the edge long before we get there. That's what I was thinking, so. But it's not stropping. Okay. Apparently I've gotten my exercise for the day. From knife sharp. Okay, so, so the goal is to evaluate these CBN plates. We did all of that without stropping. So now we need to strop. This is a different beast. So this particular strop has one micron on it. This is provided by Tokushu Knife. So I am pushing at the same sharpening angle. Now we're stropping and we're trying to make sure any of the burr gets ripped away. Uh, kangaroo tail on this would be amazing, but hanging strop would create um too much of a roll you could literally like roll the edge of the blade over so on hardnesses 61 and up we do not use hanging we use bench okay so now we have the 0.5 micron we went from one micron to the 0.5 micron uh scott gunn has let us know there's some 0.25 micron, there's 0.1 micron, and there's even a 0.05 micron. Because you needed that? Because he got scores of an 8 on a bass what? with 0.05 micron. In case you want to just mm -hmm. split the space-time continuum. What do you mean? Is that cloth like so delicate? I bet I'm, I'm the edges away from it. I'm not, if I push the knife into the cloth, it would sever the cloth. Okay. Once your non trick, uh, nip this one. You had to do the magnet. Oh, the same you one. Save the one. Just save, save the, the one. one. Of not not trick paper. Not tricky. Are you gonna drop more seriously? Just that, you know, the twelve hundred. Like it, you know, it's just I'm just double checking that I got the material off. I don't want the stone to. Well, because it's 1200 and you would normally on something else. I mean, way finer than. Yeah, way finer and stuff like that. So. Here's the thing. Do I expect that on a 1200 grit stone that I made an absolute laser on something that's this hard? No. no. So below 200 or 200 would be like amazing. To get higher than that, you've got like. I mean, people have like machinery, like the Tormic with higher diamonds, don't you know? But we're just trying to see what we can get done with the 1200. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. With the 1200, with some stropping, 
we got a very hard steel that we dull, you know, to sub 200. I mean, super thick, nice and quiet. It's just, you can see it catching, it's nice. Okay, so the takeaway, lasts a long time, takes care of every type of steel, doesn't dish, it and diamonds are harder, cost a little more. Um, can only get to a certain grit in a bench stone um, because of the nickel itself and electroplating, the material gets lower. So I'm not really sure. I've never looked to see like how fine you can get with CBN. But we know that up to the 1200 grit with Hans that we were able to take a half 40, a super steel, and we were able to get it to a sub 200 score. Definitely needed to drop it. You need to always drop your knives afterwards to get the edge. So, and honestly, it came out, it came to us like a 166, 168. I think so, I mean, if we had put it on like a 3,000, like got up to higher, I'm not sure if CBN goes to 3,000 or so on. I know I have a diamond, um, but even uh, Big big Brown Bear has, I think he has like a 5,000. Those aren't cheap. They're like $500. So you get up there or whatever. But definitely, we learned a lot using this. Heavy duty, uh, a little bit loud on the cheaper steel. That was quite that interesting. Was interesting. The difference, yeah. But I tell you what, if you were a commercial sharpener and you had to just go knife after knife after knife and not worry about flattening, it'd be an investment, something to do. We'll definitely put a link to Hans's. Glad to have it to the edition. We have a ZDP 189 that we're going to be dulling for you. Another bad day. Uh. And uh, that thing was 113 out of the box, so I'm not quite sure. On that one, we're gonna use diamonds and CBN. We're gonna see if we can do with what we have, what they were able to do at the factory. 113, it's gonna be difficult for me because I don't know if I have the tools. Excited about doing it for you. We appreciate you guys checking in. We've still got a lot of stuff going. You guys have been awesome to follow us. Friday nights at eight o'clock. This was definitely not a dull moment. Stay sharp, guys. We're out.